Hey guys, welcome back to Inequality. Today, we're going to talk about something that I've been living with for a really long time now. A disorder that is not visible and that's really hard to understand, even for people that live with it. Somatic disorder. Marigo is going to explain what it is and she's also going to address the negativity that comes with it along with some stories. So here we go! <laughs> Okay, so I just want to start by saying that my health is something that's really, really, really personal to me. I don't share this kind of thing with most people, even some of my closest friends and family members. I haven't dealt with my diagnosis and everything that comes with it fully yet. Honestly, I'm not sure I ever will. But it's a really big part of my life, so I want to be able to share it with you guys. Yeah, and thank you for sharing your story with us. I know it's a big deal for you. Yeah, for sure. So, can you start by explaining what is somatic disorder exactly? Sure. Okay, so whatever you want to call it, somatic disorder, somatic symptom disorder, symptomatic disorder, somatoform dis disorder, like all of that is the same thing. And the theory behind it is that everything related to your brain your emotions, your sleep cycle, your eating habits, your stress level, your daily thoughts, your negativity, your positivity, how much time you spend doing homework, how much time you spend in your social life, like all of that influences your fit physical pain. So basically, it's pain, physical pain, that can't be explained by a physical reason. So all of that, like, It's symptomatic disorder. So, okay, from what I understood, it's something that's actually pretty vague. Can you maybe give us a bit more details about maybe an example of when you get pain or what type of pain it actually is? Yeah, sure. So like you said, it's totally something that's really vague. And I'm actually going to get to that during this episode because, you know, Specifically, the vagueness does come with some negative things. But basically, like if you know me, you know that I have a lot of different types of pain. So, you know, I have a lot of joint pain. I have chronic pain in my back. I have chronic pain in my feet. But the most prominent, the biggest thing would probably be my migraines. So, you know, people get headaches like once in a while, but I would say I have really strong headaches about three times a week, and that probably lasts like a couple hours. And, you know, during those times, I can't study, I can't read, I can't listen to music, I can't watch TV, I can't do homework. The only thing I can do is basically sleep or lay in my bed. And, you know, actually sleeping is pretty hard so yeah <laughs> um but you might ask yourself like why does that stuff even happen well like i said i have like in my brain i have wiring that shouldn't be there so that entails that whenever i have something more psychological like i'm feeling stressed i have a bad day i'm feeling more negative or whatever it is Um, that will result in physical pain. But what would you say is the difference between someone who has clinical migraines and what you have? Well, you know, that's actually a really good question because even for doctors, it was actually really hard for them to distinguish if I had clinical migraines or tension headaches that we call them, which are, you know, basically headaches that are induced by stress. So I actually have both. And, you know, someone with only clinical migraines would actually respond really well to medical treatment. So it could be like pills, but it could also be something experimental like Botox. Botox? Yeah, I know. Botox actually is a really good treatment for people who have, um, well, tension headaches or migraines because uh 
you know they basically it's not like in your face or whatever like it's um in your skull and you know just i don't know exactly like how this that happens um because i never got it but uh you know someone like me who has um, somatic disorder like we don't respond to any kind of medication so you know i've tried most migraine medication that exists like in the whole world and it doesn't work i did not know that botox could actually help yeah i That's know it's pretty crazy I today <laughs> yeah it's so crazy because i feel like botox is more like for um physical appearance aspects um just yeah more beautiful more for confident sure. i never knew it was actually like a, it could be a medical treatment yeah well it's actually a medical treatment for a lot of illnesses like mine because you know botox relaxes the nerves so whenever like mm -hmm. you feel pain and there's no like other treatment we use botox oh, okay So what do you think are some of the stereotypes that come with having an illness that's not physical? Well, you know, I think it's really important to talk about the fact that, you know, a lot of disabilities are not visible to the eye. And if it's not, that does not mean that you have mental issues. You know, just because one of the biggest methods of treatment for a disorder like mine is seeing a psychologist that does not mean that i'm depressed or it does not mean that i have some kind of psychological or psychi psychiatric disorder like it doesn't mean that i'm crazy or that i've gone mental or that i'm a retard you know and that's really offensive word and i'm sorry for saying them but you know that's something that people like me get called sometimes Okay, so can you explain why a psychologist is a treatment option for people like you? At least explain, like, why it is in your case? Yeah, sure. So, like I said before, somatic disorder is a diagnosis that's really wide. So, I'm only going to talk about, you know, why um, for me. But, you know, pills just really don't work for me. Like, I'm still taking some right now. Um, but it's literally just because, like, when my doctor asks me, like, are you still taking your pills? Well, I can tell him, like, yes. And he won't blame me, literally, for having migraines because I don't take my pills. But, yeah, you know, I've taken pills every single day for at least the past three years. And there's nothing that has worked. Like, I have done literally every single drug like possible and it doesn't work so you know yeah guys margo takes pills like medications like all the time like every time i go to her house to like sleep over or like just chill she always has to take medications it's kind of sad but like it's her life she always has to take medications yeah so i literally take so many pills like it's crazy like when people like have never been to my house and like they come in and they see like how much <laughs> bottles yeah. of pills i actually have on yeah. like my kitchen island like they're like what the heck are you dealing or like it's crazy <laughs> like it's really crazy and you know it's something i have to think about like every single day like it doesn't matter yeah like that i'm in vacation that it's Christmas. Your mom like, has to remind matter. you. Your mom yeah. has to remind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my mom does have to now. Like, at the beginning, I was really good, like, on my own. But now, like, you know, when you take pills every single day for th three years and you're taking them for nothing, like, literally nothing, you're basically, like, putting, like, really bad stuff, like, in your own body. So... Like, my mom, she basically forces me right now to take them because, like, ugh, like, I just don't like it. I just think, you know, like, if it hasn't worked in three years, mm -hmm. like, it won't ever work. And, you know, I'd rather, like, 
concentrate myself on other th stuff and I don't know if you guys have ever taken yeah. pills but you're trying to figure out what works for you yeah exactly but you know because like nothing has worked yet like mm -hmm. whenever like it doesn't work I need to change my medication so I'm always in the trial period and I remember last year I was taking like a medication that's really really hard for the heart Mm -hmm. And I was starting a new school. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really not active. So that, of course, didn't help. Um, but, you know, I had such a hard time, like, just walking up, like, five uh, flights of stairs because, like, the medication was so crazy. Okay, so, yeah, going back to the subject, why do you need, um, why do you need psychological treatment? Yeah, let's get back to the subject. So... You know, like I said, pills don't work for me, basically. So the only other option for treatment that I have is psychological treatment. So, you know, I'd be dumb not to, like, get treated, like, not to get better. But, you know, the thing is, most people don't know this because, well, most people don't know that somatic disorder, first of all, exists and how it gets treated, secondly. But... Thirdly, we don't really get treated like, you know, a random person going to a psychologist would get treated. Like, basically, the psychologist plays a role of kind of a coach, a guide, or, you know, you could say a mentor. They basically give us advice about, like, how to be prepared and how to manage, like, really big... Um, pains so in my case that would probably be like something like a mi migraine attack and a migraine attack is basically um a really long migraine that's really um hard as far as intensity and you know i probably get them once every four to six weeks and it lasts about five to 15 days so you know I don't get treated, well, all um, people who have somatic disorder don't get treated for what, like, I guess a normal clientele of a psychologist is. Well, it's not clientele, it's patients. But you get the point. Oh my gosh, that's so long. Five to 15 days. That's basically like one week to two weeks and have a constant migraine. That, oh, that's probably not fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, really but not that's fun. Real... And especially, you know, for people who are in school, like, you know, going to school full time and having migraines, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, it won't as help. much as I do, it's crazy. <laughs> um, but that's really interesting. I, I didn't know that psychologists did that, like finding solutions. Well, I know like they they're trying to like find solutions for people who are like not in a good place mentally. But I did not know they were like, They also find solutions for you to like not have migraine yeah, well, attacks you know, or like at least prevent it. Most people don't, so um, don't worry. <laughs> but I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like that there's a stigma around going to a psychologist. What's your take on that? Especially since most people would think physical pain, like the one you're living with, can't be treated by a psychologist. Yeah, totally. So. There's a hundred percent a stigma around psychology and going to the psychologist. There's no question about that. And I mean, honestly, like a couple of years ago, before like going to a psychologist myself, I had a stigma too, you know. And honestly, I think most people are lying to themselves if they say they mm -hmm. never have had one or they don't have one currently. And like you know, in my family. Like, it's not something we really do go to a psychologist. Like, I think, well, for them and for a lot of people, it's seen kind of as a weakness. But, you know, I learned a long time ago that it takes a lot more strength and courage to open up and mm -hmm. to deal with your things and, to, you know, get helped than to ignore it and, you know, try to forget about your things and... You know, I'm being 100% real right now. Like, it's really hard to actually confront your problems and to, you know, try to deal, deal with them. I mean, I don't, like I said before, 
I don't go to a psychologist for like reasons that most people go to. But, you know, he's still a psychologist, so he does his thing. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I, I never went to a psychologist, but, like, opening up to a friend is already hard for me. I can't, ev- Im- I can't even imagine, like, opening up to a stranger. Mm-hmm. And I so. get that, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally get it. <laughs> We talk a lot about... Um, yeah, but... I'll go ahead. We talk a lot about your issues, and you seem to mention often that you feel judged sometimes by others, or like you feel judged a lot by others. But can you explain a bit why and how? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I think when I tell people that I have headaches, like they try to understand. And, you know, I don't know about you guys and you, Angie, but. You know, I've never known anyone who's never had a headache in their life. And if you never did, I just want to tell you that you are really lucky. But when I feel judged is mostly when I explain my whole situation. Like the fact that, you know, my doctors, they don't really know what to do with me. And that, you know, my best bet is to see a psychologist. Like they look at me like I'm weird and that I'm less than them. Or the worst part is, like, they feel like I'm less than someone who has, like, they would say, real migraines. But, yeah, my migraines are real. It's not just because, like, they're not treatable in the same way or, you know, I don't get treated, like, by a neurologist, like, every week that my migraines aren't real. And, you know, I've seen neurologists and even them, like, they're doctors and they judge me. Like, someone, like, a neurologist once said to me, like, well, you're not responding to medication. You don't have a tumor. Like, I don't have anything to do with you. And, ugh, that's just really hurtful. But, yeah, you know, even, like, medical professionals, they say things that, They, I hope they don't really think, but it's not because my pain, you know, isn't expl- uh, like explainable by physical reason that it's less true. Like, somatoform disorder is proven. Like, and I'm really lucky, like, I have a lot of really great doctors that do know like a lot about somatoform disorder but i've also met a lot of doctors who don't and that look at me like i'm a crazy person okay margo i've known you for a long time and i know you have so much ambition um so how does that affect you and how does it affect your goals yeah you're right you know there's a lot of things that i want for myself There's a lot of things I want for my future. And, you know, I don't plan on giving up on those things, at least not yet. But, you know, I just want to say that it's really hard to never be your 100%. Because my body hurts every single day, every minute, every second of my life. Yes, at different intensities, of course, but... It still does hurt every single moment I'm alive. And, you know, sometimes I feel like people don't think it's a big deal. And my pain, like, that you can, like, you can get used to my pain. Like, you can get used to, like, sometimes of, of pain, like, waxing or heels. Well, okay, not heels because it doesn't totally, like, get gets numb. But it does get numb at some point. But, you know... <laughs> it's pretty much impossible to get used to what I feel. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Have you ever gotten used to, like, a headache? Like, no one does. Yes, like, I do develop some tolerance to it. Like, absolutely, mm-hmm. yes. But you can't get used to it. Like, you will never feel like it's normal Or you never feel that, you know, it's okay to live, like, the way I do. Because, well, like I said, you're never your 100%. Like, how can you live like that? Like, knowing that 
your potential you will never like fully reach it like it's hard to accept oh my god i think i'm very lucky um in the sense that i never really experienced any type of consistent pain like you do the pain that i have are mostly like temporary or they come back once in a while but it's not a consistent pain mhm yeah and you know thinking about it right now i hurt and not because of my disorder because you know i want so much out of life there's so much i want to do that i want to accom- accomplish and you know so many people tell me you know oh you're so brave like you have so much ambition how do you do it like with like your condition and you know but the thing is like even if i work my very hardest I'm still not good enough because my own body is my biggest obstacle. Mhm. Uh, ah yeah, I I understand. Must be really hard. But um how does that affect you you in school? Oh my god. School. School is Oh, I don't even know how to explain <laughs> it. School is it's just really hard. I mean, I know it's hard for everybody and I don't want to diminish other people's experiences, but you know, I know that compared to like other people with my condition, like I've had it pretty easy in the sense that I never s- struggled too much as far as academics. Well, let's say like at least not before the last three years. Um and actually like my health has been a lot worse like during the past three years, so that's kind of related. Um but You know, to get back to the subject, you know, there's a lot of judgment from other classmates in school. Like sometimes I miss exams because I don't feel well, and some people seem to think that, you know, I just fake it to get an advantage, like to study longer or, you know, whatever it is they think. And you know, a lot of people also say like, "Oh my god, you're so lucky. Like you get to miss school, you get to skip classes." First of all, I don't skip classes. Like when I miss school, it's for a good reason. Like I'm probably like laying in a bed hospitalized like most times. But, you know, for a long time I used to say like, "Oh, ha ha ha, yeah, I know I'm so lucky." But I never truly felt that way. And you know, I would rather be in school and I know it's hard for people to understand, but at least I'd like to have a choice, but I don't. Like I'm forced to by my own body to not go to school. Yeah, and in high school you missed so many days, and it must be so hard to catch up with everything, you know, the material, the exams and all the information that is given during a class. It must be so hard to keep up. Oh my goodness, you don't know the half of it. Like it's really hard because like I said before, like you're never your 100%. So when you you're in school you're not your 100% so like you have to revise more at home but when you're not in school well yeah. that's even worse it's and, like as if there's no light at the end of the tunnel yeah exactly and you know especially it's hard for me because i'm someone mm-hmm. who looks very much like ahead like i live in the oh, future yeah. like, oh guys if if you guys like that i know but it's hard be- because if you like, guys don't know margo very well oh my god you you should go stalk her Pinterest board. She has like thousands of pins like about her future house, her future kids, her future kids name, her, all her ast- astrology um stuff. She is crazy like in the future futuristic stuff. It's crazy. Like I'm I'm the type to never think about the future. Well, not to think too far. Um I like to think more like in the 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 time timeline that I I can carry so. yeah well you know i get it and of course i would like to be able to focus more on my present like no one wants to be like you know so fo- focused on the future um and especially because the future is like synonym of uncertainty but you know when you're someone who has been sick pretty much their entire childhood like your only hope is the future. So, 
you have to imagine like why would you want to focus on like a point in your life when you're sick when like maybe well you hope that your future and that your adulthood will be better so you know that's one of the biggest reasons why i do focus on so much on the future because i do hope that someday i will be healthier and that that will make me happier too but to get back to the subject you know i think you know i have missed a lot of schools because of my migraines and <laughs> some people seem to think like whatever we're doing or work like a uh, group project um like they can invest less of themselves because let's say i miss a class or whatever but like if you know me you know that everything that i do miss in class like i catch up like on my own so i definitely compensate but some people seem to think that because i'm not physically in class they can work mm -hmm. less yeah but you know that's not true and i just think it's really unfair that people think their time is like worth more than mine and i mean that's not even related to school like it's just like in every circumstance but it's a pattern like that i've seen a lot i honestly would say that your time is maybe worth more because you have so much less time than like people without a disorder because you spend your time having a headache on your bed and you can't do anything productive when you have a headache uh, a migraine i mean uh. it's not it's not as simple as a headache mm -hmm. a migraine and well, you have to like work so much faster than like other people well i have both oh yeah yeah so. both yeah but you know I wouldn't say that my time is necessarily more valuable but when you compare like someone like yourself who doesn't have a lot of time because like but you have less time in a day yeah but I have less time in a day because like I'm sick but you know when I'm sick I'm laying in bed and when you compare with someone like you and I know like you don't have a lot of yeah. time but it's because you like do a lot of things outside of school well people think like it's more justified because like you do a lot of things so i just mean that people sometimes think that you know when i lay in bed like mm -hmm, i know i'm oh, just yeah. procrastinating but it's literally like i can't do anything else like no one wants to like waste so much time i mean but you have less time in a day i just feel like Yeah, I have less time in a day, but I feel like, exactly, like, because I have less time, like, it does mean that um, I can do less, but people don't realize that I have less time. Like, it, they just think that if I'm not in school, like, I'm having fun or whatever, like, oh, I'm skipping classes, but actually, I have never skipped a class. You still like, managed to get own. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky, like, my first exam in university to get 100%. But, you know, <laughs> that's a lot of work, but it's also, you know, kind of luck, I no, think. No, that's not just luck. Uh, well, yeah, I think it's, you know, partly luck, um, beginner's luck, maybe. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, anyways. But, okay, I have another question. Actually. Anyway. Mm. Do you sometimes think that people do the opposite like they kind of pity you or like they they treat you as a like a baby yeah a thousand percent and you know that is not better than being treated with no empathy i mean actually it's probably worse no one likes to be pitied but i get pitied pretty much every single day i feel so denigrated when that happens You know, it makes me feel mad even. Especially when people know everything that I want to do in life. Like, when it's people that know that, you know, I want to pursue higher education. And I want to go to really good schools. And all I want to do in my career, like, etc, etc. Like, uh, I just feel like I'm someone who supports, like, others. 
I think most people would describe me as someone who's supportive. So what I expect from others is for them to do the same towards me. And, you know, that doesn't mean that I don't let my mom, like, be sad once in a while because <laughs> of my condition. Because, you know, she's a really emotional person. So that does happen. But what it does mean is that I'm literally... Ugh, I hate it so much when whenever someone, like a stranger or even a family member, makes me feel inferior to who I really am just because of my condition. And, you know, it's not by pushing themselves up or pushing me down that, you know, they make me feel bad. I know they want to be nice, but instead it's just really annoying and hurtful. You know, some people might say that I feel that way because I'm prideful. And to some extent, I can see that point. But the thing is, people don't tell me that I can't do something just because I can't do it. It's because I'm sick. And, you know, I just think that's really unfair. And if I can't do the things that I want to do because I'm sick, well, then that's one more proof that the world isn't equal to all and actually not at all. Yeah, I definitely agree that the world is not equal. Like, from the start, from the second you're born... Yeah, for sure. Life isn't equal. Mm -hmm. Like, some people are born with, like, disorders. Some people are born with like a, in a very wealthy family some others yeah. are are born healthy mm -hmm. or like in a very poor family yeah so like once you're born it's just it, it, life is already not equal yeah i definitely agree with you and you know on paper you know you could say that i was born like with every privilege one could have Like, I'm white. Um, I was born in a well-off family in a safe country mm -hmm. with um, religious yeah. affiliation that's, I guess, mm -hmm. ideal. Um, and, you know, all of that, like, I have a check mark for all of that. But, you know, I was born with a disability that is not, like, understood at all. And that is very restrictive, Like, just in terms of jobs. And, you know, I know that's not comparable to the suffrage of black people. But it is mm -hmm. still yeah. a disadvantage. But um, going back to the point of people pitying you, I feel like some people are just trying to be nice. But they pretty much do the opposite job. Exactly. <laughs> like, sometimes you wish they haven't tried to comfort you. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, kind of annoying because... Like, sometimes yes. you really just wish they didn't talk and they didn't say anything and that would yeah. already make you feel better than them trying to comfort you. Yeah, for sure. And I just think some people, they don't really realize it, but, you know, I've been told so many things by so many people. Like, I've been told by doctors, by my friends, by my family, by strangers even, that You know, it's all in my head and I and that I'm imagining all of this. And, you know, I guess in a way it's not completely false because my physical pain comes from things that happen, well, in my brain. But it is real. Like, if you could feel my pain, you would. Like, it's not just in my head it's not because like i'm w messed up or whatever like and you know sometimes that makes me feel self-conscious because i'm just scared to tell people like when i don't feel great i can feel like they're going to roll their eyes at me again and i don't like complaining and i don't like being seen as a complainer but it's hard sometimes you know to manage pain but keep it all in yourself at the same time like you can't share it with anyone else because you're scared that you're gonna get judged and you know because it's not really something like my illness is not something that people are aware of like I don't think most people would understand my situation and I feel like kind of alone in my own bubble and you know I want to pop that bubble but I can't it's just always there mm -hmm. yeah but i feel like it comes with the fact that a lot of people don't go through what you're going through 
But yes, of course, it's nice when they understand. Yeah. Um, but if if it's not as nice, if they are here to spread bad vibes and make you feel like you're yeah. not worth it. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. That's just not okay. And yeah, they don't really know what you're going through. So it's hard for yeah. them to relate. Yeah, and that I, I know get. you very well. I know a lot of things about you and mm-hmm. what's going on mm-hmm. in your mind, what's going on yeah, in your body. Sure. Um, but I don't really relate. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say something because it's not my place to say something. And I, I feel like if I say something wrong, then mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to be bad yeah. and it's going to make you hurt even more. Mm-hmm. But I think the least I can do as a best friend or, you know, if you're just Margot's friend, the least you can do is to be here and listen to what you have to say. Um, yeah, definitely. So yeah, And, you know... When I first got diagnosed, um, I went to a group, a support group for uh, people with somatoform disorder. And it really did help me feel like I wasn't alone. And I think people need to know that you're never truly alone. Like someone is going through the same thing as you. And maybe you don't know it right then and there. But there is someone who will understand you Mm -hmm. and... That doesn't mean that your situations are exactly the same. Like, I didn't meet a copy of myself at that group, but I did meet some people that I could really relate to on certain levels, and that could relate to me as well. And, like, Angie and I are super, super close, right? I mean, we've been best friends for a while now, and we share pretty much everything with with each other. Not pretty much we do share everything with each other um and you know i think it's normal that i talk to other people about my health and that she talks to other people about other stuff because you know on certain levels we can't really relate to each other but like on some other levels Mm -hmm. like we are literally identical and we can fully understand like what each other feels but health is not one of them like i and and that's okay like it's normal that you know i talk to other people on certain about certain stuff like my health which is really important to me yeah and she talks to other people for other stuff Mm -hmm. like i understand what you're going through but i don't relate to what you're going through because i'm not exactly the same thing Mm -hmm. one thing that i find really really annoying is when someone thinks they know everything about you based on this 10 second of oh my gosh like for real it's not their place to talk or discuss Mm -hmm. about someone else's life Mm -hmm. when they don't know you at all like they don't know you like maybe they know how you talk and how you treat people but they don't really know what you're going through yeah inside Yeah, totally. And, you know, I want everyone to know and to realize that you don't know what's going on in somebody's life just by looking at them, even when they're your friends. So I think it's important to not judge a book by its cover. And that might sound basic and cliche, but I think I'm a prime example of that. So be mindful of other people's feelings because... There might be something going on inside of them that you don't know about. So you should you should definitely give them the benefit of the doubt and a chance to explain. And, you know, if they don't want to explain, that's fine. Because, you know, if I just talk about me, like, I don't want to explain, like, all the time, like, when why I'm, like, mm-hmm. missing school or whatever. Like, sometimes it's just, like, none of your business. And... You know, if you are to ask questions, you shouldn't expect, like, an answer. And if you get one, like, let's say someone asks me, oh, where were you, like, yesterday? And I say, I'm at the hospital. I'm at the hospital. Like, don't be greedy asking, like, oh, my God, like, why? Like, just ask if they're okay. And, you know they will respond what they want to respond. Like, if they want to lie and they're not okay, like, they can say they're okay and that's fine too. Yeah. But, oh my God, you know, some people are like, oh my God, why, when, 
like why mm-hmm. did you go for what like why do you even want to know like do you want it yeah. just for the tea and then spread it around school or like are you genuinely like actually care like you actually care like yeah oh, I, I, uh. I don't know like I actually don't know mm-hmm. but some people just want it for the tea though yeah and if you do like you should check yourself because yeah like you have really wrong priorities mm-hmm. but you know for someone yeah. who has a disorder like mine like it's really hard to accept that you know like i said before like your own body is your worst enemy so like you feel like no one can understand you and you feel really lonely so sometimes yes like you should just check yourself and stop asking questions that if they want to yeah. talk about it they will and since you have so many physical restrictions how do you feel when you travel like i mean i know the answer mm-hmm. but i want our listeners yeah. to know more about what you're going through because guys it's not as simple as a bit of pain and that's it yeah uh for sure and you know traveling is one of the things like i love to do like i enjoy it so much um and you should check out our instagram because <laughs> i talked to uh, about it a bit uh on there um but yeah you know like i said before like my physical pain is related to everything mm-hmm. dealing with my like psych- psyche so whatever like i sleep less when we travel um you know like changing time zones is really hard for me mm-hmm. uh, especially like in places like Europe and you know I know I'm really privileged to have even ever been to Europe but um yeah like just to give you an example like a couple of years ago like uh for my mom's birthday we went to um an island in the Caribbean it's called uh, Guadalupe Guadalupe oh uh, I don't know um oh, don't ask me I don't know <laughs> let's go maybe Guadeloupe in French is Guadeloupe Yeah, let's go with Gla- Guadeloupe since it's a French island too and I have no idea how to pronounce it in English. So yeah, a couple of years ago, me and my parents, we went to uh, the island of Guadeloupe um, in the Caribbean and we were all really excited because, you know, it was my mom's birthday and she had wanted to go there for a really long time. So she was excited, my dad was excited and, you know, it's vacation. I was excited too. Um... But yeah, so we went there for about nine days and literally the whole trip I ended up spending in my hotel room because I was so sick. Like I had a migraine attack the whole entire trip and my parents were literally like searching every little town for like, uh, you know, medication for me. But, you know, it never ended up working because like... I medication doesn't work like in Canada like we weren't expecting like to find medication like on the one of the smallest islands like <laughs> probably in the world you know so yeah it's just but yeah it's really hard to actually like plan on going somewhere like it can be like just a two hour drive to Quebec City but you know going like on like a plane to Like, I don't know where, like, uh, Spain, like, mm-hmm. yeah. that's even, like, scarier, I guess, because, like, when you get there, like, nothing tells you that you're going to be able to enjoy it. And, you know, that's a really hard reality to accept. Mm-hmm. And also, that made me think of, you know, remember in SEC 4, when I went with Helen in uh, Europe, we went to London, Ireland, and Scotland. Mm-hmm. And it was like a school um, trip. Yeah. And Margot really, really wanted to go with oh my us. Because, so you know, it's it's never the same when you go with the school, mm-hmm. with your friends, and when you go with your parents. Like, there's this yeah. extra big difference. Uh-huh. But yeah, Margot really, really wanted to go to yeah. um, Europe with us, with um, Helen and I. Mm-hmm. But she couldn't because... Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. the the trip required a lot of like walking like a lot of walking like we we hiked a lot of like mountains and stuff so margo would have never survived that because like even my legs were like numb at the end of the day yeah and you know that's not 
totally related to somatic disorder. Like, yes, I do have, like, pain uh, in my legs because of it, but I also have plantar fasciitis. And if you know what that is, <laughs> you know, like, it's, like, crazy. Yeah, I shouldn't be laughing, but it's, yeah. We, we take it lightly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we do. We try to take it lightly or else, like, we're going to have to cry, like, all night, all day, all year, every yeah. second. Yeah, yeah. We we really would. And, you know, the thing is, I've li- mm-hmm. lived with it for a while, but <laughs> it's still, like, not yeah. normal. I also have another question. Um, what do you do to keep your mind away from negative thoughts? Oof, I had a, I have a really hard time doing that, like, uh, a really hard time. Like, I'm a pretty, like, pessimist person. I know, I know that. That's why I'm <laughs> asking you this question. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm a pessimist person when it comes to myself. But when it comes to others, I would say I'm a pretty positive person. Like, actually very positive So, you know, I'm working on it and I'm trying, like, to kind of Mm -hmm. view myself, like, how I would see others. Like, try to see, like, the positive through the negative (laughs) and not the opposite. Like, not see the negative through all the positive. So, you know, I really tend to, like focus on like like little itty bitty things that are like yeah that are not super positive and you know that can ruin my day sometimes but you know I just I know like I need to learn to take things like less seriously and to just like you know live life a little like you know, I like I said before, I'm really someone who lives in the future. And, you know, that's a part of the problem, too. Because, well, this is not the future. Like, this is now. But, um, well, it's actually the past for you guys. But, you know, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah I just... You, you have to work on, Marco. Yeah, I really need to work <laughs> on it. But, you know, I'm... I am working on it. And I think that's what counts. Mm-hmm. And also, when do you feel the most lonely? Like, can you give us a specific example or do you feel lonely all the time? I hope not because you have a lot of friends, Mm. um, a lot of good friends. And I hope you don't feel lonely. But like if you if you have an example, a specific example, like when do you feel the most lonely? Yeah. um, So, you know, this is hard to talk about because it's something that's still, you know, it does still hurt. Like it's. Uh, fresh scar, I guess. But um, mm-hmm. last year, I was in a boarding school. And, you know, going to a boarding school was one of my biggest dreams. Um, so I was really excited to, you know, achieve one of that goals. Even with, like, everyone telling me I couldn't because of my illness. So I went there in September of last year. And right at the beginning, like, my health, like, started getting, like, awful. Like, I was having headaches all the time. Like, my body was aching all the time, hurting all the time. Like, I remember, like, even crying some days because, it, like, it hurt so much. Like, my head and everything else. So, you know, that all compiled in me missing, like, a lot of school and just having a hard time, like, connecting with other students because, you know, when you're in pain, well, you don't want to talk to people. So I was just not in a good place. And in January, I was hospitalized because it had been, like, about, like, 20 days, like, of constant uh, migraines. And they basically told me, like, you can't go back to school. And I was like, what are you saying? Like, I'm going back to school. Like, what the heck? Like, there's no way I'm not going back. So, like, my doctors, they said, well, if your school is willing Mm -hmm. to, like, make accommodations for you, like, sure. But the school wasn't. So, pretty much, I got 
forced to quit because, you know, they couldn't kick me out. I was a good student and all, but they also didn't want me back. So, you know, I felt like everyone who had told me I couldn't go to boarding mm -hmm. school, like, I felt like they were right. And I felt so lonely because, you know, n I mm -hmm. knew no one who had ever been, like, either kicked out of school or who had even stopped school, like, willingly. And I just felt like a failure, really, um, because, like, I had always put all my eggs into one single basket, academia. And I didn't have that anymore. So, you know, I didn't know what to do with my life. And so that was a really hard time for me. And, you know, everyone I knew was still in school. Like, the people I knew from boarding school, they were still in school. And the people I knew from my high school, they were in CJEP. So I was the only one, like, stuck. I just felt like... I had no outlet, uh, nothing like outside of school to put like all my energy and, you know, my frustration with the whole situation like in. So, you know, that's when like I decided to make sure like this doesn't happen again. I'm going to need to kind of get involved in something else. So that's when I decided to, well, I didn't really decide on my own. I would say Angie helped me <laughs> with that a lot. Um, but yeah, she basically suggested to me like to start taking voice lessons and I did. I'm so proud. Yeah. And guys, I really need to, you know, thank Angie because she gets all the credit. I didn't want to do it and she pushed me and now I love it. So. <laughs> I'm so proud, guys, to initiate Margot to try something new and f try to find a new hobby. And yeah. Because I know she has really, really good ears. Because when we sing together, like, yes, we do sing together a lot. But when yes, we sing sir. together, like, <laughs> I can tell that she knows what's in tune and what's not in tune. And just this is very rare in people. Like, a lot of people don't know what's in tune and what's not, like... To them, it sounds the same. Margot, she's very sensitive to the pitch, the sound. And that's very rare. So I just thought that maybe she could try to sing. And now she's taking singing classes and she really enjoys that. Yeah, I really do. And I'm going to flex on you guys a little bit because I'm actually a Colorado or a soprano. Um, I actually have no idea what that means. So it's not really a flex, but... Yeah, yeah. You guys should Google it. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Is there a specific event where you really wish you could attend, but you couldn't because of physical pain? Yeah, well, there's more than one, but, you know, of course, I would have liked to finish um, boarding school. Well, it's not really an event, but, you know, it's... An experience. Yeah, it's an experience. But, you know, of course, I would have wanted to finish it because, like I said before, like... I took it really hard, mm -hmm. like, because, like, I did, like, it's my fault. Like, I shouldn't have put all my eggs in to one basket, but I did, you know. And, you know, I'm still glad that it happened in, like, boarding school, in high school, because I think it would have been a lot worse, like, if, if it was, like, in university or, like, imagine, like, graduate school graduate school that would be like awful but um yeah I just think that you know of course I would have want to finish and I would have liked to just have a better experience in general because like the experience I did have was not that good and that was not because of the school itself but like it was because of me because of my diagnosis I didn't make uh the best of my experience and you know All of that did affect, like, the school that I'm going to right now. And it's not a bad school. It's just, like, I always wanted to go to um, the U.S. for university, and yeah. now I'm not. And I know it's not your dream school, but I'm sure one day you will. You will get in your dream school. I really hope so. And, you know, I think the main thing is that, you know, I 
now realize that maybe I'm not ready right now and that's fine. Maybe it'll be in graduate school that I'd go like in a really good school like for the US. Like right now I'm looking at mm-hmm. the sports law program at Tulane. Guys, so when we'll Margo see. Guys, when I say Margo thinks ahead, she thinks ahead. Yeah, you know, guys, I really do. Um, but, you know, I'm just like that. Mm-hmm. You're like that. Okay, Margo, last question. Are there any benefits to somatic disorder? Um, I wouldn't say benefit plural, but if there is one benefit, I guess it would be that, well, everyone with an illness that grows up with an illness, like, we all kind of mature more quickly. Um, You know, a lot of people tell me like I'm an old soul and I think I really am. But I think a part of that is that I realized from a very young age, like what a privilege health actually is. Um, Because, you know, I've been striving for that like my whole life, literally. So yeah. maturing quicker i guess that could be like a benefit you have to deal so much at such a young age yeah exactly so yeah anyways margot thank you so much for opening up um in this episode and i really hope you it made you feel better like Mm -hmm. it made you feel light lighter like yeah the weight off of your shoulder yeah definitely and you know It's hard to talk about, but, you know, I really wanted to share my experience with you guys. I hope it'll help some of you. And, you know... Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will. And I hope you will have learned something today. Um, I know somatic disorder is not, like, the happiest thing to talk about. But I think it is still important because, like, um, the numbers are growing for people who have... Um, somatic disorder and it's especially like in young girls Um, so yeah um, I just really wanted to talk about it Mm -hmm. and I just want to tell you guys that if you do suffer from somatic disorder or any illness at all like I'm really happy to talk to you guys about it and you're not alone but I just want to thank you Angie for doing this with me you were a really great uh, interviewer um but guys you definitely need to check out our instagram it's at inequality we post on there every single day you can also check out our twitter at inequality underscore we also now have a tiktok it's at inequality and we also have a business email which is at inequality no not at sorry inequality at gmail.com um feel free to contact us on any of those platforms and please follow us so we'll see you next time guys bye